Hello, Jesus Image Church. Welcome. Oh my God. So good to be here tonight. Welcome to everyone who's online joining us. So good to have you around the world. If you can hear my accent, I come from Switzerland. So I love the countries around the world. It's amazing. Um, wow. As soon as I stepped on the stage, the Lord was like reminding me of the honor it is to just worship him can you just guys look around you guys like we get to be here tonight and worship the king of king do you realize what we get to do come on it's so great i love it because of what jesus paid on the cross we get to have communion with the father he restored the connection we, have, we can have with the Father. And tonight we get to celebrate the cornerstone, deliverer, king of kings, prince of peace, Yeshua, healer, our, de our redeemer. So Lord, we welcome you tonight. We're so thankful we can worship you, Jesus. We're so thankful, God, we can bring you praise and worship and adoration, God. May you be exalted tonight, Jesus. We love you and you welcome Holy Spirit. You'll be honored tonight, God. You will be loved tonight, Jesus. You will be loved, Jesus. Come, Lord, we love you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. There is no shadow that is ever overcome you. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. Oh, we've already won. And there is no weapon that has ever left. There is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, oh, we've already won. So show me one thing you can't do. Show
despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment and break every chain Oh, all of my fear I will turn into grace Come on! A victory dance, I will dance out in faith He will crush disappointment and break every chain Oh! King of glory, strong and mighty. We give you worship, Lord. All that we are is yours. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Come on, one more time. Let's lift up another shout to him. You are 
darkness you give hope and you restore every heart that is broken we sing great are you Lord oh great are you Lord great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Oh, every living, breathing thing praise the Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing.
in our lives So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your praise in our lives Your breath in our lungs. Let's just sing a praise to Him. Sing a praise to Him.
only one name lifted high here tonight The most important one Most important person in the room The only one who can save tonight The only one who redeems Oh, the only one who set us free
for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to you.
satisfy my heart. Only you can satisfy my soul. Oh, 
in Jesus' name. Heaviness has to go when Jesus shows up. Oh, heaviness has to, it has to go. It has to go. It has to go. It has to go. The people of God will not stay in weariness, but they shall be lifted. He is the glory and the lifter of our heads. His name will never be overcome. He has all. He has all power. He has all authority. It's in his name. It's in his name. It's in his name. Yeah. Your name, your name is light that the shadow 
Where is 
is your steel Our resurrected King Has rendered you defeated And forever He is glorified Forever He is lifted high Forever He is risen He is alive He is alive The ground began to shake As the storm was rolled away Perfect love cannot be overcome. Now, death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. And forever He is glorified. Forever. thank you that you are Lord and that you are King. God, I thank you that you are here with us tonight. God, we don't do this out of repetition, Father. God, but I pray we are a people that worship you in spirit and in truth from our innermost being. God, we thank you that you're here tonight, that you truly do inhabit the praises of your people. This is your home. This is your house. It is unto you and you alone, Jesus. I pray we have a single eye tonight, an eye that sees you, Lord. Everything we do, we do it unto you. Let it be worship unto you, Jesus. In your beautiful, precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's just thank, let's thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly King. Thank you, Heavenly King. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're here. Oh, you're here. Precious, beautiful man. Come on, the Lord is here. Jesus is here. Amen. Come on, why don't we thank our worship team and our choir tonight? Amazing Levites. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to step into a moment of worship as well. Come on, how many of you guys know this is not a transition period, but we're going to 
give of our tithes and our offering, and this is truly unto him. So why don't we welcome Jenna as she comes up. Good evening, Jesus Image Church. That was beautiful. I get the honor and privilege to teach about tithes and offerings and the honor that it is to give to Jesus. That word just kept leaping in my heart tonight. What an honor it is to give. In Revelation 5, 12, it says, worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then we can go to Proverbs 3, 9. And it says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best parts of everything you produce. And then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. And we get the privilege to honor Jesus, like Revelation said, in this way. So we say thank you, Lord, tonight for the honor and the privilege that it is to bless you and to love you in this way. We bless this offering and this tithe, this tenth and this overflow, Jesus. And we honor you and we love you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you would like to give and you're watching online, you can text the number that is on your screen. If Jesus Image Church has blessed you, we invite you to join us in giving as well as if you are in this room, you can text the number on your screen. And if you need an envelope, you can raise your hand and we'll come find you and we will be back in just a moment. Come and rush the bucket.
an amazing night for you tonight. Are you guys excited? I have the honor to introduce our next guest. We have Francis Chan with us tonight. We are so honored. <laughs> they beat me to it. She's going to say real quickly um, what an honor it is to have you with us tonight. We are truly honored. You've been such a blessing to our generation. And when I look at you, I see Jesus in your eyes. And we're thank so you. blessed to have you tonight. Awesome. So let's welcome Francis Chan. Oh. It is so good to be with you guys. I think... When did we talk about this? Like two years ago? At least, I think, where I've been trying to work it out to be out here just to see what God is doing, not to come teach or whatever else. I just wanted to experience what God has uh, done uh, through, through the ministry here and, and through Michael as we've gotten to know each other a little bit over the last couple of years. Um, and uh, Michael helped me out through, some, uh, <laughs> through a pretty difficult time in my life, confusing time in my life, and was such a blessing. And ever since then, I go, gosh, I got to get out. And every time it just didn't quite work out, so I finally come, and, and he can't talk. Uh, <clears throat> so, <laughs> perfect. Um, but it's so good, because it's not about him, right? And it is about just the heart of this place, which is we just want to host the presence of God and just hear from him and just really believe that he is a real person who really is here in the room and we're, we're literally singing to him from the core of our beings. We're telling him, God, you know, sing hallelujah. I'm praising you, God, for everything you've done in me. And so during worship, I... I'm not just saying because I'm here. I don't remember the last time I've, I've felt this during worship where I, I think a, a lot of times when we're leading something, you're, you're worried about everyone else, and it was nice just to be here and go, okay, I'm not in charge of anything. God, I'm just going to come into your presence. And it sounds like this church is all about coming into your presence and not about performance and not about, you know, they just, just, they just really want you, God, to be blessed. And so it was just so enjoyable to me to just be focusing on blessing him. Like from the core of who I am, just going, God, all I want to do right now is tell you how great you are. And I want you to be blessed by my heart right now, by my soul. I want you to be blessed by this, that Francis remembers being a little kid and totally lost. Francis remembers being in his sin, you know, high school, college years, and just, just, just learning about you and everything else. And you, you saved me from all that, and you continue to purify me and bring me closer to you. And it's me, this being that you created, created right now. I just want to tell you how good you are. I want you to be blessed. You know, for too many years, we show up to these gatherings wanting to be blessed, and we will be, but it's about blessing him and go, God, we want you to be blessed. And so, I don't know, it was just a great time of enjoying him, but also repentance in me going, God, how many times have I sung songs and done this thing and, you know, gone to a worship service and my heart isn't connecting with you like it is right now. God, I want to stay here. I want to stay here and thinking about blessing you. And I, you know, and that, that's, you know, I mean, I'll just say that, you know, sometimes familiarity, you know, because this is my first time here. So sometimes you come to something new and you're so like mesmerized by everything. Whoa, they're all wearing black. Oh, you know, they, you know I'm just looking around and, and uh, you just, so many things catch your eye 
and you're so distracted, and then you can't worship. But that, you know, that happened for maybe two minutes. But uh, other times, things become so familiar that you forget what you're doing. And I was wondering about that because I'm going, God, I am so into you right now. I am so into this, so into your presence. But the thought goes through our mind, I wonder if these guys are just so used to it that it's become like another service. You know, uh, the, the group up here in worship, you know, I'm just impressed you're up there singing with all your heart for so long. And I'm going, God, are their hearts, you know, still as fired up as mine is right now? Because it's new to me, you know? And, you know, familiarity is just, there's just something about it, right? Like we do that in relationships. I, I, I just, you know, I think about my wife and I, I still remember when I first saw her, you know, at this church, she was a guest soloist, and I was like, oh, this is crazy. She is, this is insane. And she was Miss Teen California, and there, you know, and I'm like, whoa, this woman is so out of my league. And, uh, <clears throat> But I just thought, I'm just going to go for it, you know, which I never do. I, I was always the guy that would find out from friends, like, hey, if I ask her out, will she go? You know, but it was like, I'm just going for it. I'm losing my hair. I got to try something. <laughs> and just went for it, right? And I remember, like, getting her phone number and being so scared to call her. And this was back then, before cell phones, you had to dial it up, and... Uh, and uh, I know it's so weird, huh? Like in the movies for you guys. I, I lived that out. And, but I remember I was so scared to call her, so I wrote out a bunch of notes of things we could talk about in case I forget. Because she wouldn't know, right? I just didn't want to blow it, right? And, uh, but all along, I'm just blown away. This girl said yes. We're going to go out. And the whole time just terrified, like, oh, this is going to end. This is going to end. You know, like, like just so blown away. And every little thing she did was just so cute and everything else, right? And then you get married. <laughs> you have a kid or seven, you know, in our case. And, you, you know, and, but I remember one time we were driving somewhere and, you know, she, she's addicted to, to soda, or she was, you know, to just Coke. Um, and I remember one time, she always would buy those 44 ounce, like, ah, oh, gross. And I remember, you know, we're driving somewhere and she accidentally knocks it over, you know, in the car. And I just look at her and I go, good job. And I literally said, now I think you've spilled Coke on everything we own. <laughs> like, I, and it came out of my mouth. I'm like, that was so rude. <laughs> like, what, what happened from like the beginning where I'm having notes and I'm nervous talking to her on the phone to good job. <laughs> you just spilled Coke on everything we own now. There was something about that familiar, because I, I think, gosh, when we were dating, if she had spilled Coke on me, I'd be like, oh, that's so cute, you know, like, <laughs> right? And there was something about the familiarity that, that, that you just get so comfortable and, and you forget. And, and so with worship, and, and, and my wife and I, we have a wonderful uh, marriage. We just celebrated a, a week ago, 28 years. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and it was awesome. So good, and we had gotten in a busy season, so so good just to get away and go, wow, this is so fun being just with you, and you know, went up in the mountains, we went ice skating on this little, little outdoor rink, and all the, you know, just do g -g 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 type of stuff, and it was just like, this is so fun being with you again, and I... Uh, 
I remember times when I would uh, get a glimpse of what God was like in Scripture. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm talking to you. I'm singing to you. So right now the angels are covering themselves up. Angels are covering themselves up from head to toe, screaming, holy, holy, holy. And, and you're this amazing God up there. And right now I am singing to you. I'm talking to you. Are you kidding me? But how quickly we deviate and it just becomes, oh God, and help me with this real quick. And, and we get these seasons. And so that's why I'm saying like, tonight was special for me. Just go, God, here we are. And it's really Nice being in this room with other people that seem to be like reaching for you. You know, there's a, there's a picture in our house. Um, and, and my wife and I, we, we have this poster of this, or whatever you call it, canvas thing. Of, um, it's, it's a picture of just this hand coming out and reaching through all these feet and touching the cloak of Jesus. And there's a, it's, it's from a painting in Israel that we saw. And uh, it's just that woman reaching out for Jesus. Like, and, and then Jesus goes, wait, someone touched me. You know? And the disciples are like, no, everyone touched you. You're in a crowd. What are you talking about? He goes, no, no, no. Someone touched me, like intentionally. Like she went after me and touched me. And it's that attitude, you know, of, of it just felt like for me that I wasn't alone in this room where there were others that were just going, I, I, gotta, I gotta touch him. I wanna encounter him. I want to experience him. God, I'm not, I, I'm not satisfied with anything else. I don't want to sit through a church service. I don't just wanna sing songs and listen to a sermon. I wanna encounter. You know? And we've got to keep that picture in mind of I want to be that woman that's, that's reaching, that's going, okay, there's a crowd here, but God, you know there's this connection where I'm just giving everything from the core of my being to touch you. Other people are, are, are you know, in the crowd, but God, I want you. I want to experience you. And even as I say that, I'm thinking, God, I don't want to get into preaching mode right now. You know? I didn't come here to preach. come here because I've heard of a group of people that really reaches for him. In my conversations with Michael a couple years ago, I thought, this isn't like just talking to another trendy pastor, right? It's like, okay, there is a depth here. And uh, I want to be associated with him. And I want to see his ministry, and I want, to, I, I want to see what God's doing through him, and maybe I can experience some of these things that he's talking about. Because I've preached thousands of times, and there's so many times where I'm begging God, going, God, could this be the time when it's just so different? And it's not... There's no show at all. There's no concern about what anyone thinks except for you. Could it be that time where, God, I look at people in the eyes and I actually love them? Because it's easy to get in front of a group and just preach and feel nothing. And there's other times I look at strangers in the eyes and God fills me with a love for them. 
And I actually care and go, God, I don't know, I don't know her name, but she's going to stand before you one day. And God, I want her to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And so God, by your spirit, could you fill me with some sort of words, like when I open my mouth, but it's not just words, like it's power and there's a spiritual, something of the spirit that that goes through me to her, that that, that just leads her in this journey somehow because it's from you and and it's not just a quick emotional thing, but it's internal, inside of her and to where one day, maybe a hundred years from now, in eternity, you look at me, I mean, it could happen, you could look at me and go, you know that night you, you actually cared about me and you looked me in the eyes and you just picked me out of a crowd like Jesus did something to me that night and, and it led me on this path and a hundred years from now we're looking at each other in the presence of God, whatever that looks like. And she says, the Spirit spoke through you that night and changed everything. And so I I pray and pray for me that all of me that is of the flesh and then Francis Chan is just like, ah, just get him out. Would he die so that Christ would live through him? You know, I want that. I want that. And I praise God because I I feel 100% at peace that I can pursue that and that you want me to pursue that. And there isn't the pressure to be like, oh, you better perform, you better nail it, and there's the countdown clock, and, oh, you know, it's just, I don't feel any of that here. I just, I want to, I want to feel like we really are family. You know, I think about that, that and, and it's hard when you come somewhere new and you don't know me, I don't know you. Is it First John 4, 12, where he says, no one has ever seen God. No one has ever seen God, but if we, I want to say it perfectly, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in, his, in, in us and his love is perfected in us. See, so it's not just me coming here, getting on my knees and say, God, I want you to manifest here. I want you to abide. He says, no, no one has ever seen God, but if we love God, one another, God abides in us. So I need to love you. You need to love me. You can't just look at me as some speaker to evaluate. You have to care about me as a human being with a real soul that really wants to not get lost in this world right now, but to have my affections really be focused on him. And I need to care about you and not just go, oh, I hope they like my talk, but to actually care about your souls and go, did this do anything? And God says, when you love one another, that's when I abide in you. That somehow the presence of God has to do with this loving of one another. And so I'm praying, God, help me to love, help me to care. I'm going to look every one of you that I can in the eyes. And God, when I see them, what I care about their souls, may I not look at the flesh and blood and not dwell on the visible, but the unseen things that each of you has the soul created by God. 
that was made to worship him. So when we're singing that song, just saying, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Our souls were made for that. Like this is it. And I'm just confessing, God, I don't want to think about anything else. Okay, I don't want to think about anything else. There are distractions. There are so many things, God, I want to focus on you. I want to see your power. I love this book. Oh, I love the Word of God. I love the Word of God. Here's this old, this preacher who died, I don't know, 80 years ago, um, Smith Wigglesworth, and he says, the Bible is the only book I will read because it's the only book whose words are alive. I thought, wow, that's a very simple statement. You know, as, as many of you know, I've, I've written some books. I think they're pretty good. Um, <laughs> But when I heard that statement, you know, this was just a few months ago, I go, wow. God, I don't know if I want anyone reading my books, except for the scripture that's in them. I mean, if it takes people to the scriptures, but the scripture, like it's alive. Like the, it's alive. Like if I read the scriptures, there's, there's life in that. If I speak, we don't know. We don't know what this does. But we know the word of God doesn't return void. I remember years ago, I was, uh, God gave me this picture of, you know, like when I was in India, I remember seeing like it had rained and so there's, puddles on the ground and these brown puddles and I see in the morning there's all these these people near the puddles washing their clothes in the puddles and I'm looking at the water going that water is brown their clothes must be really dirty you must be so desperate to to go that is actually doing something that brown water is better than what I've got And that picture in my mind was, Francis, that's your sermon. It can help a little bit, but it's not like the word. The pure word of God? In November, I was in Kona with our friend Andy Bird and um, speaking for YWAM. And uh, I invited a friend of mine to come teach with me during one of the days. And I I couldn't believe he came out for the whole day, my friend David Platt. And uh, he gave this message. And afterwards, I'm going, I've heard a lot of sermons. I've given a lot of sermons. And I thought, that is the greatest sermon I have heard. I mean, I don't just say that. And even becoming before here, you know, I came here, I thought, you know, I've never heard Michael speak, so I watched a couple of your messages, and, you know, it was good. <laughs> you know? So I don't just say, that was the best message I ever heard. I go, no, it was good, it was good. But when I heard David, <laughs> he's okay with this. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going with myself. I'm a preacher. I go, I've never preached like that. And that was the best sermon I've ever heard. Because he just started quoting scripture. He started quoting like full chapters out of Romans. And the whole time I'm like, this is, this is that clean water. where I'm just going, oh, this is so good. And everyone's hearts was just 
being lifted up by the word of God. And so I left there in November. I go, man, I want to start memorizing the word of God. I, it's been literally decades. I just got busy with other things and I thought I'm going to start memorizing. And I started memorizing again and started memorizing the book of Ephesians. And I'm looking at this book and so it's been on my mind like almost every waking moment because when you memorize, it's just like these phrases in your head where I'm going, God, this is too much. You know, when he's saying in, in chapter one, verse three, he goes, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So I was talking about earlier, he, he starts off just going, blessed be the God and Father. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And I'm going, God, I don't even know. I, I, I can't even fathom what that is. We look at earthly things, and people chase earthly things, and then they get them all and go, oh, this isn't it. You know, but even some of us can, can covet some of that and go, oh, that would be the life. And God's going, I've blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Do we understand what that means? I'm coming before I go, God, I don't think I understand that. If I understood that, I don't know if I could ever get sad. It might be momentary or whatever, but if I really understood what that would look like, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Wait, you chose me before the foundation of the world? So before you said earth, you, the God who said earth, let there be light on that before that you chose me in him? Before the foundation of the world, that I should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Christ Jesus according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace. Wait, in love? You predestined me to be adopted as your son? Wait, so before the foundation of the world, in love, you predestined me to be adopted as your son? In Christ Jesus, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace. I mean, I'm just thinking about these phrases all day going, did you really choose me before the foundation of the world? Did you love me like you you desired, you wanted me. This is all a part of this plan that's been forever. And I'm just dwelling on these truths all day. And it's taken me into this other place with the Lord. And I'm begging you, memorize this book. I, I mean, studying it is great. I, I just... 
I'm just, you know, I was convicted as I heard someone quoting the word of God and it was so beautiful that I was like, okay, I, I need to do that. That was so beautiful, so pure. And I just want to encourage you to do the same thing because I'm reading the way Paul speaks and writes and thinks and I'm going, God, it's like he's in this other world where you want me. And I just look at a lot of my thoughts and I think, oh God, I I don't think like that. My thoughts don't stay up here. I don't even know if they've ever gone this high, but your word is like getting me in this place where I'm like, what? What? Every phrase I'm going, oh God, I want to know this. I want to know this. I want to know this. And I feel like I've been here, and, and, I, and I get it. See, like, here are the thoughts of Scripture. And most people are here. And so we got to come down here, and we're going, okay, I want to take them here. But what happens is we get to about here. I believe this is what's happened in our country. And people go, well, that's enough for me. And so suddenly we go, that's, that's it then. That's all there is. Now look at all these people that we have here. And so I didn't even know this existed because this was the goal. Get them from here, get them to here, get them to here, get them to here. Look at all the people that are here. And I'm reading the scriptures and going, oh God, there's so much more. I want to be here. I want my mind to be here. And it's the word of God. Just let the word of God cleanse you tonight. God, would your word just do what you promised it would do? That we would just receive your word, your blessed word. There are no words like your words, God. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he had predestined us for adoption as sons in Christ Jesus, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished on us in all wisdom and understanding, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness in time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we've obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. For this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know, know what is the hope to which he has called you, What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of power toward us who believe? 
according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that was ever named, not only in this age, but in the one that is to come. And he put all things under his feet and he gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that's now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and mind. And we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places. Listen to this. So that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For it's by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It's a gift from God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he determined beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far off have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace that he might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross thereby killing the hostility and he came and preached peace to you who are far off and peace to those who were near For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner for the Lord Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard the stewardship of God's grace given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I've written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and members of the same body and partakers in the promise of Christ through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace by the working of his power. To me, Even though I'm the least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. 
This was according to his eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to his power that's at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I therefore... A prisoner for the Lord urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Eager to maintain the unity of the, of the spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to the one, one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one God, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he, gave, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also descended into the lower regions, the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we would no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by the craftiness and deceitful schemes, but rather speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole structure being joined together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part, when each part is working properly, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So now I testify. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that we must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their, under, they, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They've become callous. They've given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learn Jesus. That's not the way you learn Christ. Assuming that you've heard about him and you were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off the old self, which belongs to our former way of life and is corrupted by deceitful desires. And to be renewed in the spirit of our minds. And to take on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. 
Therefore, having put away all falsehood, let us speak, let us, let us, let us each speak the truth to our neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands that he may have something to share with anyone who is in need. And let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Okay? Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths except that which is that, except that which is, is good for building others up as fits the occasion so that it gives grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another. tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God and Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among the saints. Let there be no filthiness or foolish talk or crude joking which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For for you may be sure of this, everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them. Do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what pleases the Lord and take no part in the fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them, for it is shameful even to speak about the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed to the light, it becomes visible. And everything that is visible, anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Make the most, make the best use of your time, because the days are evil. And don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. As the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. And husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her with the washing of the water with the word, that he might present the church to himself in splendor, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. 
Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I'm saying it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wives see that they respect their husbands. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as unto Christ, not by way of eye service, as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Jesus Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bond servant or is free. Masters, do the same to them and stop your threatening knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there's no partiality with him. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and his shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness that comes from the, that is given by the gospel of peace, and take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me that words would be given to me in the opening of my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak so that you may also know how I am and what I am doing. Tychicus, the beloved brother, and faithful minister and the Lord will tell you everything. I have sent him to you for this very purpose that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. Amen. The word of God is so beautiful. It is so alive. Was your heart just like, oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just all along, I'm just trying to get these words out and feel them and think them. And I'm just like, God, this is too much. My mind is going to explode. One of the things that strikes me most about that passage was in chapter three when he says, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father. Okay, because this is why I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. 
Okay, so everyone in heaven, everything on earth, every, it's all from one being. And he says, this is why I bow my knees before him. I mean, when you understand who you're speaking to, sometimes the natural response is to bow your knees. Okay, I'm breathing because of you. That's all I need to know. And now you're telling me every being in heaven and earth is named because of you. He goes, for this reason, I bow my knees. And he says, and his prayers, that according to the riches of his glory. So he's on his knees and he's saying, God, according to the riches of your glory. Try to imagine the riches of his glory. Okay? We know God is a God of glory. He is such a God of glory that he says, you can't even look at me right now. No human being can see my face and live. That's glory. We can't look at him and live. And so Paul's on his knees and says, according to the riches of your glory. That's a lot of riches. According to the riches of your glory, I'm praying that you would grant them. Would you just give it to them, God? To be strengthened with power through your spirit in their inner being. Why? So that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith. So he's begging, and I'm looking at I'm going, God, wait a second. These are believers. These guys are already believers. In chapter 1, you said, because, you know, Paul says, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. But why is he now on his knees, you know, before the God from whom all, you know, every, every family in heaven and earth is named and saying, according to the riches of your glory, would you give it to them? Would you just grant it to them? Would you just grant it to them the strength through your spirit in their inner being so that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith? Wait a second. I remember being a teenager and someone telling me, pray and Jesus will come into your heart. Doesn't that happen the moment I pray that prayer? Why is Paul on his knees? Begging the God of, of who created everything that according to the riches of his glory, he's got to give it to these believers to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in the inner man so that Christ could dwell in their hearts through faith. We, we kind of just say these things like, oh yeah, Jesus is in my heart now. Do you understand what in the world we are saying? My wife and I were watching some show where, I don't know, it was just a goofy show, and, and they, were, they had like plutonium, I think, isn't that like nuclear stuff? And the way it was encased in everything, it's like, you, you don't go, oh, you got some plutonium? Can you put it in this? It, it just, you need this lead or one, I don't, I don't know what it was, but you need uh, something strong. I'm not a rocket science. And... Uh, and the idea is, you don't just put that in anything. Okay, so now you're talking about Jesus, the creator of the world, whose glory we can't even look upon, and we're saying, God, enter into me, so you can just come in. And Paul's saying, God, I'm praying according to the riches of your glory, that you would, you would just grant them to be strengthened with power, through your spirit and the inner being so that Christ, so we can put Christ in them. You better strengthen who they are because we're talking about putting Christ into them. So would you strengthen them with power through the spirit in their inner being so that Christ would not just be someone they visit once a week at church, but that he would dwell in their hearts through faith. Oh, God, do I pray like that for my church? Do I pray like that for my kids, that Christ would dwell in their hearts through faith? A lot of times we look at a lot of the things like, oh, help that guy not be so angry. Oh, she's so divisive and keeps gossiping. You know, get her to stop. Make her sick. Whatever. 
you know? But it's all like these symptomatic type of stuff rather than the root of the issue saying, God, God, according to the riches of your glory, would you just grant her to be strengthened with power through your spirit and the inner being so that Christ would dwell. He would just live there in her heart through faith. And then he says that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. Listen to this. And to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. Wait, you're you're praying for all of that so that they would know the love of Christ? Isn't that the first thing we learned? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right? So I know it. See, this is the way we think in our Western context. It is about information. Oh, I know. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. I, know, I knew that ever since I was a kid. Why is Paul on his knees begging and saying, God, I want them to be rooted and grounded in love so that they would have enough strength to comprehend how wide and long and high and deep and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. How do you know something that is beyond knowing? He's not talking about information. It's not something you can draw on a chalkboard and go, look, here's the love of Christ. He's on his knees saying, God, I want them to know the love of Christ. It's beyond knowledge. There are Bible scholars who do not know the love of Christ. There are gifted pastors and leaders that don't know, know in the core of their being that they're loved by Jesus. This isn't something that is just information that we get tested on. Paul's on his knees and they go, God, this miracle needs to happen to where they know, they know they're loved by Jesus. That is a crazy thing to believe and to know in your heart that the creator of the universe loves you. But he says, I want them to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that they may be filled with all the fullness of God. Are you telling me, God, that somehow I could be filled with all the fullness of God? See, there are some of you in this room, you haven't even dreamt about that. You're just trying to get rid of this sin or that sin, or you're just trying to have a, you know, quiet time, five out of seven days. You're just, you know, whatever. You're not thinking, God, I want to be filled with all the fullness of God. I want to be just completely filled with your fullness. And some of you are thinking, well, that, that's not even possible. Well, it's really interesting that you say that because the very next verse is now to him who is able, right? To do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power that's at work within us. It's like, oh God, I don't know, I don't know what it'd be like to get in front of a crowd and be filled with all the fullness of God. And God's saying, you gotta understand who you're praying to. You're praying to the God who's able to do far more abundantly than all that you ask or think, according to the power that's at work within us. Not within Paul, not just within Paul, not just within Michael. You're saying this is available to us. This is who we're praying to. And so my prayer is, look, I believe there are people in this room, you've heard about Jesus, but you don't know the love of Christ. There's so many insecurities. 
being rejected from childhood. Look, I know because I have been wrestling with this. I look at, I'm just full confession here. I'm reading this passage going, God, I don't know. I don't know if I know the love of Christ the way Paul did. My mom died giving birth to me. So my dad sent me off to Hong Kong. I, I, he didn't want, I, I killed his wife. My birth killed his wife. Sent me off to be with my grandparents in Hong Kong, and then he remarried, and so then I come back in the States when I'm six, probably because my grandma won't watch me anymore. It's getting too old. So my dad has to take me. My brother and sister have had their own life without me, my older brother and older sister. I didn't even speak English. Coming over as like a five-year-old kid, and they didn't want me. My dad didn't want me. My stepmom, maybe, but then she died in a car accident two, two years later. And my dad, is just, he just treated me different from all the other kids, and, and I understand now. And so when he died when I was 12, after all the beatings and just rejection, we never had a single, we never talked once. He never even says, hey, how do you like that sandwich? Nothing, nothing, nothing. The only time he spoke is when he would tell me to do something or beat me. I remember him tying me to a tree, grabbing all the branches and just going at it until a branch would break. He'd grab another one, and I am screaming at the top of my lungs. He just leaves me tied to a tree. It's getting dark. I don't know if I need to go in. So when he died when I was 12, I'm kind of sad. I'm kind of not. So you spend your life going, no one. Growing up, no one cared if I was dead or alive. In fact, they, they prefer death. We don't want him here. Now you're supposed to, now you're, now you're telling me the God of the universe. chose me in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined me to be adopted as his son in Christ Jesus. You can write that on a piece of paper. You can make me memorize it. But that doesn't mean that I know. I know it. Where you know you're loved. I've been in ministry for about Almost 40 years. I'm going, God, there's still some insecurity in me. I see it. There's still like shame. There's still embarrassment over things I did 40 years ago. What in the world, Lord? I want to know this love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. I want to know it all. See, some of us that have been rejected... And we, don't, we, we just grew up not knowing unconditional love. It takes the word of God. It takes, it takes the Holy Spirit. It takes people getting on their knees, begging that according to the riches of his glory, he would strengthen a kid like me with power through his spirit the very center of whoever I am so that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith. I think there's a lot of people in this room that know what I'm talking about. That you know you were taught this stuff. You intellectually would get it right on a test. Does Jesus love you? True or false? True. But to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge I'm praying for a miracle tonight. This is our only hope that somehow God, according to the riches of his glory, he just decides in heaven. I'm going to grant it to them. I'm just going to give them so much grace. I'm going to give them so much strength in their inner being. 
It's no longer an external thing where you're trying not to sin, but something changes inside. And it's not earning and, and, and trying to do something to prove something. It's just, he did. According to the riches of his glory, he just strengthened me. Inside of me. And now suddenly I know that I'm loved by Jesus, the creator. And now all I want to do is serve him and tell people about what Jesus did in my life because I now know the love of Christ. I think there's some of you in this room. First, let me just remind you of what we believe. Okay, this is for your head. That you have a creator. Someone created you. He's a perfect, holy judge. He has every right to judge you as he sees fit. Because this is the God from whom every person, every being in heaven and earth is named. And he gives us commands. He says, this is the way I want you to live. I, that other stuff is disgusting to me. But we've all broken those commands, right? We, it was among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. There have been times when we have just carried out whatever our bodies or minds wanted to do. That's the world's message. Do whatever feels good. Whatever your mind and body wants to do, do it. Well, Scripture says if you do that, that's, that's the spirit of disobedience that you're following the course of this world, the prince of the power, you're following Satan. And we all did. We just did whatever we felt like doing. But that God, at that time, we were children of wrath. God saying, you broke my commands, you're following what you want to do rather than what I told you to do. You're a child of wrath. That is a, I don't know if there's any phrase in scripture I hate more than that. Ch children of wrath. So I'm a child, a being for you to pour your wrath out upon because of my disobedience. But God, the way our creator is, is he is rich in mercy. Okay, so this is who he is. Like, that is who he is. He is a being is rich. Like he wants to forgive. He wants to not give you what is fair and, and what you deserve. That's, that's who he is at the core of his being. He's rich in mercy. And because of the great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses. He made us alive. You know just how he raised Christ from the dead? He says, I'm going to do that with you. By grace, we've been saved. He says, so that in the coming ages, he might show the, I love, this is probably my favorite verse in there. I think maybe I can't tell. But verse seven. So that in the coming age, he might show. So what God wants is in the coming age to show the immeasurable, you can't measure, the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. He goes, I want to pour my mercy out on you, raise you up with Christ. You know why? So that in the coming ages, I just want to show the immeasurable riches of my grace in kindness towards you in Christ Jesus. This is your goal? So that one day you would all look and go, no way. You are going to pour that much grace on Francis. Knowing everything he's done, every thought that's gone through his mind, you're going to do that? He goes, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. 
so in the coming age I might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness through Christ Jesus. Incredible. And he wants that to start right now. But you have to come to the end of yourself and say, I need that. He says, you know, it's by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. Okay? You have to get over yourself and thinking, oh, I've done a bunch of good. No, 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 no. By grace. Grace. is all about grace. Why? Because at the end, he wants to just pour out his grace and go, look, Michael didn't earn that. Look what I'm about to do, to, do for him. I'm going to pour out this grace. He goes, I don't want him boasting and going, oh, I lived a holy life. I let Jesus' image. He goes, no, no, no. I don't want him boasting. I don't want anyone getting glory except for me. I'll take his voice away. <laughs> it, uh, <clears throat> right? He just says, no, this, this has got to be about him. Yes, this is about before the foundation of the world. What did you do? Do you understand this? Like, it gets really silly when you understand the story of this eternal God who had things hidden in, in him for ages. What? So there's this mystery hidden for ages. And Paul says, God revealed that to me, this mystery by revelation. He goes, he didn't show this to the sons of men in other generations. He revealed it just now, so 2,000 years ago. This, this is like, he goes, wow, all those thousands of people didn't know he know, I know. This is, this is a story that we're a part of. This is not about us. And then somehow so that we could be joined to the apostles and prophets and Christ himself when we all become this one temple. I'm just this little addition onto there and I'm a fellow heir go, whoa all of that and he says that when you heard the word which you just heard the gospel of your salvation and believed in him he says you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who's the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So what we're talking about tonight is for those of you, maybe some of you are going, wow, this is insane. But I think I'm one of those guys you're talking about. I just heard the word of truth, this gospel of salvation, and now I want to be sealed with his promised Holy Spirit. I want that Holy Spirit to come into me. I want Jesus to enter into me. If that's you and you're going, God, I don't know if I ever got it till now. I don't think I ever knew the love of Christ but I want to know him now. And I want to be sealed with that promised Holy Spirit until I obtain this inheritance. I want this so that I can be filled with all the fullness of God. And I don't want to live down here just like another human being. I want to be filled with all the fullness of God. I want to invite you. I just want to pray over you. Some of the leaders want to pray over you. These prayers that Paul prayed. I am convinced that the shallowness of the church in the U.S. is because of the shallowness of our prayer lives. We are not praying these Ephesian-like prayers. But I want to pray for that. I was praying for you on the plane. And I'm going to pray for you right now. So if there's anyone in this room that says, you know what? I don't know the love of Christ. I have not known the love of Christ. But I want to know him tonight. If that's you, I'm just going to ask you to do something brave and just come forward. 
walk up here to the front and just get on your knees because I'm going to get on my knees for you. Amen. Some of the leaders will come along and they're going to pray these prayers for you. We're going to pray for a miracle tonight (laughs) that some of you that have felt rejected your whole life didn't feel like you were loved, like a miracle just happens tonight. Where God, just by his grace, you're on your knees right now because of God's grace. That this is the night that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You're going, this is the only thing that can save me. And I wanna know the love of Christ. So the rest of you believers, man, be praying. Don't just close your eyes and say stuff from the core of your being. Be praying for these these new brothers and sisters. Now, right now, the miracle would take place. Okay, God's in heaven. He hears your prayers. And he's in this room with us. Pray, beg him the way Paul did that according to the riches of his glory, you're talking to the God who spoke and created all these souls up here. Pray that according to the riches of his glory, he would just grant, it's just a grant, he just gives it to them right now. That they'd be strengthened with power in their inner being.
Holy God. Holy, holy, holy God. Would you grant it to us to be strengthened with power through your spirit in the inner being so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. God, would you seal these with your promised Holy Spirit so that they cry out, Abba, Abba, that they'd understand that you want to adopt them. So they cry, Abba, Father, Abba, by the Spirit, Lord, May they cry out, Abba. That's what the Spirit does in us. Suddenly we can cry out, Abba, Father, and really believe that the God of the universe is our Father, the right father, a good father. I believe the Lord is doing something right now. I know he has in my own heart. He's just showing me as I was crying, suddenly I just started saying, Abba, Abba. And I just realized this is the way I used to speak when I was a kid. I, in Chinese, the word father is Baba, Abba. And I remember being tied to the tree and being beaten by my dad, and I'm screaming, Baba, Motama, Baba, Motama, Dad, don't hit me, Dad, don't hit me, Dad, stop, Baba, Motama. And now I'm talking to the God of the universe, and I'm going, Abba. Abba, you love me. You chose me just because of your grace to be adopted. And my soul can cry out, Abba, Abba, Abba. I can rest in my heavenly Father. Oh, Jesus. Oh God, you did not make us your slaves. You made us sons. Oh God. May they know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge because you grant them this knowledge. May their spirits, their inner beings cry out, Abba. Those of you at your seats, I want you to pray understanding that the wrestle, these people are not going to wrestle against flesh and blood. Okay? But they're rulers, authorities, cosmic powers over this present darkness, spiritual forces in the evil, in, in the heavenly places spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And that's why we need to pray all times in the spirit. Pray for them. Pray against all that is demonic in the spirit. 
pray against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Father, we thank you that you are able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. And we are asking that you would drive away the darkness, that you would strengthen these brothers and sisters before us, Lord, with power in their inner beings, Lord, so that they'd be, be able to resist and stand against the schemes of the devil. We're praying that they would be able to resist in the evil day when that temptation comes, that they would be able to resist and that they would not follow the course of this world. But would you make them alive together with Christ right now? Seal them with your Holy Spirit. that we'd see the fruit of the Spirit. All that is good and right and true. All the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, just flowing through them like never before, just because of your grace. According to the riches of your glory, pour this out on your sons and daughters. For your name's sake. We're going to go into a time of communion right now. For those of you that are at the altar, you guys are welcome to stay there. God is touching many of you right now, and I believe as we partake the body and blood of Jesus, he's going to continue to heal your minds and heal your bodies. So if you can get your communion elements ready. And so I just feel the invitation to come to the table today, not out of routine or familiarity, but coming to the table, knowing that the Lord is present with us in the room. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God is truly daily bread. It's truly daily bread. It is truly food. And as Francis so beautifully shared scripture, there's so much power, power that compelled those to come to the altar tonight. How we need his word. And so in Isaiah 53, 
We read this scripture often when we come to the table, but there is power in the word, amen? And Isaiah 4, 53, 4 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And by his stripes we are healed and by his stripes we are healed and so Jesus we lift this bread tonight recognizing you're here you're in the room you are moving among us and so thank you Jesus for your broken body thank you that by your stripes we are healed it is finished it's really finished it's really good news and so we declare today as we take this in faith if you need healing in your bodies if you're watching at home if you need healing come to the table today in faith and receive what was already paid for and by faith we receive the fullness of our healing in our bodies in our minds everything that we need is found in him and was already paid for so jesus we thank you and we remember we remember today lord and we thank you for every healing that has already taken place and is taking place. And we say it is finished by your stripes in Jesus' name. Let's receive in faith what he's paid for. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, none of us, Lord, none of us are worthy of this meal, Lord. None of us are worthy to be in your presence, but it is by your blood and by your sacrifice that any of us can come before you, Jesus. And so we thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice that you bore everything in your own body, every sickness, every disease, every weakness, every infirmity you bore in your own body, and you shed your blood for the remission of sins, God. We have been redeemed by your blood. We have been cleansed by your blood. We have been made right and received your mercy and your grace by your blood and lord i thank you tonight that you have made a covenant with us and sealed it and cut it with your blood and everything is found in that covenant jesus your very life is in that blood so lord i pray that as we partake of the covenant the new covenant the blood covenant the eternal covenant i pray that we receive your very life into every cell of our bodies into our soul into our spirit and we thank you for it jesus amen partake of his blood
a few things before I pray over you. But I feel like the Lord is going to erase the memory of some of your past because it's covered by the blood. And there's lies that you've been believing from the enemy, but the blood of Jesus speaks a better word. I'll say that again. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now. Precious Holy Spirit, we need your help. We thank you that you comfort us, Lord, in our trials. 
And Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the blood that was shed on the cross, Jesus. Lord, for our sins, God, and for our healings, Jesus. You bore it all, Jesus. So we thank you, Father, for the blood. Just thank him for the blood right now. We thank you, Jesus, for the cross. We thank you, Jesus, for your love. We thank you that you did not leave us as orphans. You did not abandon us, that you love us with an everlasting love, Jesus. And we're so thankful for you, God. We're so thankful. So we worship you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. And I thank you, God, that you will seal it tonight. Everything that you did, Jesus, seal it tonight. Let us never go back, Jesus. Let us never go back to our old ways, Jesus. Let us keep our eyes ahead and look at you and look at the cross, Jesus. We thank you, God, that you will teach us daily to die to ourselves in Jesus' name. Teach us to die, Jesus. Teach us to die. We die to all those things that have gotten in the way. We die to our flesh tonight in Jesus' name. We die, Jesus, and we thank you when we die. You raise us up in new life and you raise us up in your presence, Jesus and we thank you father we thank you for the blood we thank you jesus for your forgiveness of our sins jesus we thank you god that you bore it jesus that day on the cross and we give it to you right now in jesus name we thank you okay yeah uh, michael wants us as a church just to bless francis can we just just pray for him and just stretch our hands towards him. Lord, thank you for this gift that you've given us, Lord, in Francis, God. Thank you, Jesus, for the fire, Lord, in his eyes, Jesus. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in him, even in his family, Jesus, Lord. We pray for his wife right now and his children, Jesus, Lord. We ask that you put a hedge around them, God. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the truth that comes out of his lips, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the provoking revelation that he brought tonight, Jesus, in this church, God. And I thank you, God, that more people will hear this word, Lord. And I thank you, God, you are raising him up as someone that you can trust, Jesus. Jesus. And I thank you, God, that it's just the beginning, God. It's just the beginning for him, Lord. I thank you, God, that his family will see great days. I don't know if there's a daughter that you have that's uh, maybe middle-aged, but I believe God's about to just visit her in a fresh new way. I don't know if she writes or sings, or, but I feel like she's got a very creative gift. And God is going to visit your children. I feel that so strong. God is going to visit your children in a fresh new way. Things that you only dreamed about, they're going to see in their generation, Lord. So, Lord, we bless this family. We thank you, God, for their lives, Jesus. We thank you. Lord, use them in a mighty way in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you, God, for the blessing that he left. Amen. Amen. So. We're gonna say good night. We love you. If you've come and you want prayer, I wanna invite our prayer team to come, to come down to the front and you can come down and we'd love to pray for you. See you next Sunday morning at our new location in Edgewater High School and we will see you next Sunday night here. We love you so much. Everyone, Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. Local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house and so listen, we just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that, we believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we wanna invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is gonna do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're gonna show you right now. 
I want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County, right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program, yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10:42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into Children's Church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for His presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry. 
our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary, depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. May millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space in the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May He be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.